Uh, the southwest coast of Florida is forever transformed by Hurricane Ian's powerful winds and a storm, historic storm surge. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis describing it as a 500-year flood event. Hurricane Ian isn't finished. The still dangerous Category 1 storm is now ready to make a second strike on the United States, taking aim at South Carolina. CBN's Caitlin Burke begins our coverage. The National Hurricane Center warning people that Ian is still a dangerous storm. Life-threatening flooding, storm surge, and strong winds now expected for the Carolinas as Ian makes its second landfall near Charleston later today. We know what's coming, uh, so we, there's a little bit of wiggle room in exactly how strong the rains and how strong the wind will be, but the biggest variable is, is human reaction is people failing to take the necessary precautions. President Biden declaring an emergency in South Carolina ahead of the storm. Federal help on standby to supplement local response efforts. Meanwhile, in southwest Florida, the focus is on search and rescue. Now, these are very challenging circumstances for our rescuers, very dangerous circumstances. They're dealing with high water, uh, you know, cities that don't look like cities anymore. As of Thursday night, 12 people had been confirmed dead, with more than 700 confirmed rescues. Both numbers expected to continue to grow. The impacts of this storm are, are historic, and the damage that was done uh, has been historic. Residents who chose to ride out the storm in areas like hard-hit Fort Myers, witnessing total and complete destruction. But I literally watched my house disappear with everything in it. Mm -hmm. Right before my eyes. Aerial videos show a landscape forever changed by both the strength of a Category 4 hurricane and the once in 500 years flooding that came with it. A historic pier gone, the Sanibel Causeway washed away, and homes and businesses still covered by up to 12 feet of water. We weren't prepared for quite a storm of this magnitude. We were hoping it would dodge us. It, it didn't. It got worse. While southwest Florida got the worst of Ian, nearly the entire state was affected. The east coast also experiencing significant flooding. We started to see the water coming through the windows. I would say it'd take a few days to get everything clean. As rescue teams continue their work, more help is on the way. Dozens of American Red Cross volunteers from Connecticut to Rhode Island are headed south. And President Biden promising federal help for those who don't have insurance and for those who have lost property. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. The damage from this storm is absolutely unimaginable. It's on the level of what Katrina did. It's just absolutely horrific uh, for the people in southwest Florida. If you want to be a help to them, uh, where Operation Blessing is, is on the move now as the storm uh, heads north, our teams are heading south to the, the most affected areas, and you can be a part of it. How? By giving to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. There's the address on your screen. You can write to us, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put Disaster Relief Fund uh, on the memo line of a check. You can call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, I want to give to Operation Blessing Disaster Relief. You can go to cbn.com. There's a place on the giving page where you can designate your gift to Disaster Relief. Or you can also text to give. Text the letters OBDR, that stands for Operation Blessing Disaster Relief, to 71777, and you'll be directed to a giving page on your smartphone, your tablet, uh, and you can give that way. Either way, let's do our part. This is a horrific storm, horrific damage, uh, and we need to be there for people. Well, before the hurricane took a turn to the east, Tampa was bracing for Ian's impact. And CBN's Brody Carter reports that today, the people of that city are grateful they were spared the brunt of the storm. Hard to believe the sun is shining after such a monstrous storm was threatening the coast here in Tampa Bay. I was talking to the people about this being the epicenter, at least it should have been, and they say they're thankful by the grace of God it wasn't catastrophic. It's back to life as usual for Tampa. 300,000 people were evacuated from Hillsborough County as forecasters called for the worst to hit Tampa. A flood of traffic came back at the first sign it was safe to come home. 
Hurricane Ian was forecasted to hit Tampa head on, surprising everyone after landing 90 miles south in Cayo Costa. A hurricane always makes a shift at the last minute with us for some reason. And it did it again, thank God. Those who stayed to weather the storm say God's grace is what saved the city. So it was a lot of debris hitting my house. There was a lot of sounds going on outside. I was definitely praying to God. And we just checked on my house today by the grace of God, like no flooding. I put sandbags out, my shutters up. And I was just thinking today, if Ian literally came for us, Oh my God, it would have been very, very bad. The catastrophic Category 4 winds and storm surge shifted south, leveling the southwest coast. We're here in Naples, Florida, where local residents are recovering in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Operation Blessing is moving into the hardest hit areas, coordinating with local churches to distribute support and much needed supplies like generators, tarps, emergency food and water. We're also partnering with local churches in the area to help find the greatest need. Pastor Russell Benson of Nations Church Orlando says it's hard to understand why these storms happen, but says the goodness of God will certainly bring us through them. You know, I want to encourage them. The Lord is with you. God is with you in the middle of the storm, no matter what your trial is. It may be a physical hurricane or it may be something spiritual in your life that you're going through. The Lord is there and he's there to offer you peace and comfort through the storm. So just reach out to him. Back here in Tampa, not a lot of damage to be cleaned up and the people who live here are very thankful for that. Brody Carter, CBN News. Well, they're, th they're thankful in Tampa. But in Fort Myers, they're going through it, and it's, it's absolutely horrific there. Uh, it's a tale of two cities, best of times in Tampa, worst of times in Fort Myers. Let us be there for the people that have been most impacted by this storm. Again, if you want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund, real simple, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. You can go to cbn.com, give there. There's a way you can designate to the Disaster Relief Fund, or you can text us, OBDR, to 71777. In other news, Russia stepped up its bombardment of Ukrainian cities ahead of its move to annex large portions of Ukraine. Charlene Aaron has more of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Charlene? Gordon, Russia's military is pounding Ukrainian cities with missiles and rockets in the heaviest bombardment in weeks. At least 25 are reported dead in a strike on Zaporozhia. The assault coming hours before Vladimir Putin officially annexed large parts of Ukrainian territory under Russian control. President Biden saying the move is illegal. The United States will never, never, never recognize Russia's claims on Ukraine sovereign territory. In the meantime, Ukrainian forces are closing in on a Russian-held city that could set the stage for a push into one of those regions. When the war in Ukraine began, thousands of Jews fled to safety in Israel. This week, CBN Israel organized a special event for them during the Jewish holidays. Our Chris Mitchell was on hand to capture the celebration. Following the beginning of the Jewish New Year, CBN Israel sponsored this program that brought together the people it supports on a monthly basis, including a number of Ukrainian Jews who fled the war. The program included songs, dance, and a message to let them know they are not alone. This celebration marks several months and some of these families left behind homes, towns, and livelihoods because of the war in Ukraine. Many left behind everything and the places they used to call home are destroyed. Anna Nahayeva lived near Bucha, the epicenter of some of the worst atrocities of the war. I saw the destruction with my own eyes. I saw the craters and the pavement and the houses broken down and the cars that had been burned. We know of a family that was shot dead. The whole family was shot dead five minutes away from where my parents lived. CBN partnered with a Jewish agency earlier this year to bring some of the Jews who fled the war to Israel. Now CBN Israel is maintaining this relationship. Talking about uh, refugees, so actually we are helping to, uh, with uh, home appliances like um, fridges, washing machines. I mean, the things that you are need from first day in your new rental apartment, mm. for most of them it's first experience in their life. And uh, most of them are saying it's a miracle, exactly this word. So it's for part of them, it's first miracle in their lives. I just haven't seen it elsewhere. 
everywhere, but these are the people of God that are helping others, and I've never seen it anywhere else. While the war rages on and some may never return to their homes, these Ukrainians like Anna, her husband and 10-month-old girl are grateful to CBN Israel and CBN partners for helping them adjust to their new life in Israel. We cry out to God for help and we don't really expect him to lower his arms to help us. But we do see your arms helping us. So you're doing God's work and we're thankful to receive that help. Ina Nahaev used to watch the 700 Club in Ukraine and now found help through its CBN partners. Thank you so much for the support, because we came here to Israel with just one bag. And because of CBN, we got everything we need to start our new lives. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Carmiel, Israel. Wonderful story. Back to you, Gordon. It's amazing what happens when we get together and say, let's make a difference. Let's make a difference in the world today. You just saw an effort that literally took decades to put together. Uh, to say, first, we're going to have an outreach in Ukraine. Uh, that started after the fall of the Soviet Union, so that was around 1990, 1991. And then uh, the CBN Israel, uh, that uh, kicked off in earnest uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, and now here we are, and we're able to help people. We're able to help the refugees coming out of Ukraine to resettle in Israel, and it's all possible because of your faithful giving. If you're a member of the 700 Club, thank you for that. Uh, together we have joined with uh, thousands of people over a long period of time in order to make that kind of result happen. And you heard it from that wonderful mother from Ukraine. So often we pray, we don't expect God to let down his hands. But you are his hands working in that situation to give them a hope and a future to let them know that God, yes, indeed does, does answer prayer. And in the larger context of what God is doing in the world today, where he is working all things together for good, he actually put that plan into place 40 years ago. And you, you, you see it move through generations and through the years. And you can't help but wonder and thank God, you are an amazing God. You plan long term. You don't make any kind of short term plans. Here in America, we're calling people to pray for our nation, and I encourage you to join with us. It's real easy if you want to say, yes, I'll pray for 40 days for America, that God would let down his hands and change us. Uh, we need to be changed. We need to return to him. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Today I want to pray, and before we pray, I want to remind us that it's not our virtue that brings the blessings of God. Here are the words of Moses. It's to the nation of Israel. You find it in Deuteronomy chapter 9. You must recognize that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land because you are good, for you are not. You are a stubborn people. Let us recognize God has not given America to us, this great legacy, the generations who have come before us dedicated to liberty, dedicated to being one nation under God, indivisible. We have to realize we're a stubborn people. We need to turn. We need to melt our hearts before him. So let's pray that we would do that. We would do our part, and then God will continue to do his part, which is give us this good land. Give us something that we can build and be a shining light for the whole world. Let's pray. Lord, we lift up America to you. We lift up everyone, and we just ask that you would melt our stubborn hearts, that we would turn to you we would realize that you're the source of all our blessings. You're the source of our peace. You're the source of our prosperity. Let us never forget and never even imagine that somehow it's our hard work that has done this. It's your provision. You have made it possible. You have put these things in place for our enjoyment and we have turned away in our stubbornness we have turned away. Lord, 
restore us. Let us turn to you. Let us see your countenance, see your face. And in that, may we have peace again. Turn us, Lord God, and we will turn. Bless us with this, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, we're praying for America, and we want you to join us. So call us, 1-800-700-7000, or go to PrayForAmerica.com. Let us know you'll be praying. When you do, we'll send you a prayer flag and a prayer for, Pray for America bumper sticker. Those will serve as reminders to pray every day for 40 days. And don't stop there. You can keep praying. We need to pray for our nation to turn. So call us, 1-800-700-7000, or go to PrayForAmerica.com. Airports across Russia are packed with young men fleeing the specter of being drafted to fight in Ukraine. Many are going to Armenia, a Christian country that's under Russia's protection from its Muslim neighbors. However, Russia's military failures in Ukraine have revealed its weaknesses, and Armenia is once again facing attacks. International correspondent Chuck Holton reports. Russia's disastrous campaign in Ukraine is making waves back at home, and the recent call-up of another 300,000 troops has sparked a national rush for the exits, adding to the hundreds of thousands of mostly men who have already fled since the war began. Russia has always been one of Armenia's most important allies, although that relationship has turned awkward since the invasion of Ukraine. Armenia is now being flooded daily by Russians in the thousands, entering on one-way tickets. CBN spoke with some of them about the conflict earlier this year. Yeah, they are against the war. Everyone that I'm talking with, like, they are, they saying they, they like, against the war. Even if the war ends and, like, Russia loses, I don't see myself living comfortably in a country where, like, uh, the country leader is almost like a Hitler. <laughs> and, like, the absolutely militaristic state of the government right now is awful. There are Russians all over here in downtown Yerevan, and I've been talking to many of them. Seems like most are young professionals, IT people, things like that, people who do their work online. And that's something that you really can't do right now in Russia because of the sanctions. Also, everybody that I've spoken to has been vehemently against this war, but there's a catch. They don't want to go on camera and talk about it. That says a lot about how much they fear their own government, because most of them still have families back in Russia. As Russian power appears to crumble, many former Soviet countries are jockeying for stature and position to possibly benefit from a weaker Russia. And Armenia sits squarely in the middle of this political power play, including Russia, Azerbaijan, Iran, and Turkey. Azerbaijan recently launched multiple attacks on its neighbor, killing more than 200 Armenian military and civilians in the latest flare-up of an ongoing conflict over territory. When that happened, Armenia appealed to the Collective Security Treaty Organization, Russia's version of NATO, but help did not arrive. The world doesn't help us, but we shouldn't be offended because we have locked ourselves in the chains of the CSTO, which sits on our neck. We have no right to ask for any help from the world. When we are free from this CSTO and from the Russian shackles, then the entire world can step up on our side. We have all witnessed Russia's failures in Ukraine. We've seen what happened in the Kharkiv front, and Russia's military capabilities have actually dwindled a lot in the last month. So Russia is not interested uh, in confronting uh, neither Azerbaijan nor Turkey because it doesn't have capabilities. I am a refugee from Russia. I was persecuted for political reasons. I came to escape one war and ended up in another one. I can't escape it. I want this to stop as soon as possible. The CSTO must do something or it may as well not exist. September 17th, U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi traveled to Armenia and condemned the Azeri aggression, which concerns more than one million Armenians living in her home state of California. The U.S. plays a st stabilizing role. The U.S. actually managed to broker a ceasefire on the 15th of September. In uh, my latest calls with uh, both uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan and uh, President Aliyev, uh, both leaders told me that uh, they are ready for peace. Active uh, in its communications with Baku and President Aliyev, 
urging him not to escalate, urging him to disengage its forces from the sovereign territory of Armenia. So the only hope uh, is on the Americans that they will somehow put some uh, dem uh, diplomatic and political pressure on the Aliyev regime and will stop this aggression from becoming or from turning into a large-scale war. Armenians were very grateful for the attention from the West, with many calling for deeper cooperation. If the United States is interested in having some sort of presence in the South Caucasus, and I'm absolutely sure Washington is interested in that, it should pressure both Turkey and Azerbaijan, who are actively cooperating with Russia, and push them towards a more constructive stance towards Armenia. For CBN News, I'm Chuck Holton. It's amazing to see the American flag flying in Armenia uh, as a plea for us to come and help them. This is one of the things that happens in the world where, when, when, when strength proves to be some kind of an illusion. Uh, for Azerbaijan, that strength is not an illusion. They absolutely dominate the skies. They have this drone technology uh, that has made them absolutely dominant on the battlefield. And so in any show of weakness, and in this case, it's from Russia, the, the, the uh, supposed Rus Russian military might has been shown to be incredibly weak in Ukraine. So what does that mean? Well, Azerbaijan, you're seeing it. That it's time for us to see some territory uh, and uh, have, have our traditional enemy, Armenia, come under our rule once again. Let us pray. All Christians around the world should pray for Armenia. It is one of the first Christian countries. There's a whole debate. Is it Georgia or is it Armenia? Forget the debate. There are brothers and our sisters in the faith and let us pray for them that God would deliver them. October 1st, 1961, the equipment was broken, the engineer wasn't ready, and we were $5,000 short, 15 minutes before air. Well, that's the story behind the very first broadcast of the Christian Broadcasting Network. With some early donations, Pat got the FCC license for Channel 27 with the call letters W-Y-A-H, the first three letters of the Hebrew name of God. With that, CBN became the first television station in America licensed to broadcast 50% or more religious programming. The studio was far from being ready and Pat still owed RCA $5,000, but that didn't stop him from scheduling CBN's inaugural broadcast for October 1st, 1961. I didn't have the money on the day we were supposed to go on the air. <laughs> and I opened the Bible and my eyes fell on the psalm. It said, the salvation of the Lord is at hand. And I thought, it's coming. And I just began to praise God. And on the way to church that day, I encountered a friend and I said, come over to the station. We're going on the air today. And he stopped by, and 15 minutes before 1 o'clock when we were supposed to go on the air, I said, look, I'm short $5,000. And he bowed his head, put his head in his hand. He said, I'll let you have the five. And I said, okay, we're ready to go. Of course, the engineer didn't believe we'd get it, so he wasn't ready. <laughs> by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the engineer had cobbled together the broken equipment, and the Christian Broadcasting Network made its television debut. CBN. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents the following program. It was a snowy black and white image of Pat preaching the gospel in front of a dry rotted curtain and a cardboard cross. My church was there in that little station. It didn't look too impressive really to tell you the truth. We had this tiny transmitter, and I didn't know if we were on the air. We didn't have a monitor. My husband said, I'll go down to the drugstore. They've got a TV, and I'll check and see. He came back and said, we know you're at least getting to the corner, which was less than a block away. It wasn't very far. But it was a start, one that was riddled with challenges. It was survival. 
Can we get enough money to pay the bills? Are we reaching anybody? Can I get a new camera? Can I make that camera work? Will the transmitter stay on the air? Will you know it blow up in my face and do I have the tubes to fill it? And always pressure, always pressure. You know, it, it, the Lord, when you're walking by faith, it, it isn't necessarily easy. I often marvel when Pat tells the stories of the early beginnings, I think, I don't think I would have had the chutzpah to do some of those things that he did. With great admiration, I say that. And thanks to you, you're part of this 60 years story. Uh, and it's amazing what God has been, been doing for 60 years, what he has planned for our future. Uh, I can't wait to see what he has in store for us. God has been faithful to us for more than 60 years. You can watch the full story of the Christian Broadcasting Network by checking out the CBN story on the CBN Family app or going to cbnfamily.com and you can watch the full CBN story, how God has been faithful for 60 years. Well, CBN's been praying for our viewers for years. People like Bruce, he had excruciating pain in his stomach. He also had a lump protruding from his right side. He and his wife feared the worst, that his stomach cancer had returned, until Bruce heard his name spoken on this show. It had been going on for a while before it started to bother me. I realized that I wasn't going to the bathroom like I should. It was April 2019 when Bruce Schnur started experiencing painful constipation. I got to the point where I stopped eating. It, it, was a, it was a constant pain there. I'd suck it up as best I could. His doctor at the VA gave him a prescription, but the pills had no effect. So Bruce also tried numerous over-the-counter products and home remedies. With only occasional relief, after seven months, his wife Sonia was worried. He seemed tired all the time. He didn't seem to eat as much anymore, he, which scared me, because now I'm thinking the worst. The worst? being that the cancer removed from his esophagus and stomach 10 years earlier had returned. The doctor sent Bruce for x-rays. Uh, the x-ray didn't show anything. And so what they continue to do with me is um, just medicate, you know, pill, 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 pill. Nothing seemed to work. And it just kept getting worse. Four months later, Sonia noticed something new. When I put my arm around him, I felt the lump there. And it was hard. It was protruding right out of my side. It got to the point, you know, it started out with small and it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and you couldn't touch it because it hurt so bad. When I realized that, I knew then there was something wrong. Again, hoping to rule out cancer, Bruce's doctor sent him for a CAT scan. And again, the cancer had not returned. They did find something else. He says right here on this CAT scan, you got a horrible blockage in your intestine. It could turn gangrene if you don't get it looked at. The doctor ordered a colonoscopy for later that year. All Bruce and Sonia could do now was wait. He was feeling okay, but wasn't feeling okay. Then it got to where he just didn't feel like doing anything. More than a year later, in August of 2020, a few months before the colonoscopy, Bruce and Sonia attended a funeral out of town. Playing cards in their hotel room, they turned on the 700 Club. Believe God, nothing's impossible. We're listening to the, the whole show. Pat was praying for somebody with intestinal problems. There's an intestinal blockage. You're, it's, it's like your, your intestines are, are looped over and, and you, 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 there's a possibility of gangrene. So right, right now you've been having a lot of uh, problems. And I'm praying in agreement with him, but I wasn't even thinking about me. I laid my hand on somebody and said, you got to claim that. You know, that, that's for you. Bruce wasn't sure at first until... Your name's Bruce, I believe. And you just touch your stomach right now and you'll feel the power of God going through and everything's gonna be okay in Jesus' name. And we were both very excited about that, you know, because that was me. I, I was having this problem and I said, yes, I do, I claim I am. Within hours, Bruce felt an urge he hadn't felt for over a year. He needed to use the restroom. The blockage, the lump, and the pain were completely gone. God healed me of that, that night. It was awesome, it was overwhelming. The love of God is awesome. Bruce went ahead with a colonoscopy that confirmed what they already knew. He's doing awesome, he's eating, he's back to his normal self. I've never believed I was anybody, but obviously I'm somebody to God. Obviously I'm somebody to God. 
Yes, he is somebody to God, and so are you. You know, the most amazing thing about that to me is that not Pat calling forth his name, but God making sure that Bruce got the message. You see, God loves you. He's omniscient. He sees and knows all of your issues. He's omnipresent. He's with you now, but he's also in your tomorrow. He's already gone before you. We want to take some time to pray with you today for whatever issues you are facing in your life. Maybe they're physical or medical like Bruce's were. They could be financial. They could be relational. They could be addictions. God wants to set you free to live your life abundantly. That's what Jesus said. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. So we want to pray for you. I want to mention before we start to pray, this is Arlene. She lives in Smithtown, New York. She couldn't straighten her finger due to chronic arthritis. She lived with that pain for a year. And then one day she turned on the television and Gordon, she heard you say, you have excruciating arthritis and carpal tunnel in your right hand. There's so much pain in your fingers. God is healing all of that for you right now. Arlene agreed with Gordon for others, not even thinking about her own crooked finger. Two days later, her sister noticed her finger was straight, and she said something about it. <laughs> Arlene knew right away it was a direct result of the word of knowledge. <laughs> That's amazing, a secret miracle. Here's Stacy by email. On Father's Day weekend, my 67 seven-year-old dad went in for a highly anticipated liver transplant. The first liver failed immediately, and he lived with less, less than 40% functions. Well, doctors were not optimistic, telling us the potential dark reality of his fate based on their medical training. We rallied for him in prayer. I called the 700 Club for prayer and had three people call and follow up during the seven week duration of my dad's stay. On day five, with only 30 hours to live, with all odds against him as an O plus blood type, he received a second liver. CBN's prayer warriors were instrumental in interceding on our behalf. He is a living miracle. Here's something for you. You are a living miracle. Bruce was going, well, you know, I'm not important. I mean, why would God pay attention to me? You are God's child. Bruce is God's child. Here's some good news for you. Jesus thinks you're worth the price he paid. Isn't that amazing? You're worth it. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You are that joy, the joy unspeakable and full of glory, that moment in heaven where you will be reunited with your creator. He paid it all for that moment. That's what he was looking forward to. He knows you by name. He numbers every hair on your head. He loves you tenderly. He died for you. He died so that you could be healed. Isn't that wonderful? Let's just think on that. Let's just lie back in, in his love and say, yes, Jesus, whatever you have for me, whatever destiny, whatever calling, whatever purpose, whatever you want, you have given your all for me. I give it back. I give myself to you. That is the Christian experience. And you can have it right now. All you have to do is pray and ask, and he will come down from heaven and be born in your heart and make you new again from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Let's pray. Let's believe, and God will do the rest. Lord God Almighty, we come to you. We come to you believing, and we come to you with thanksgiving that while we were sinners, you died for us. You love us so much that you were willing to give yourself so that we could be with you. Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal diseases now. Do signs, wonders, miracles. We thank you for what you are doing, what you have done, and what you will do in the future. We receive it all from you now in Jesus' name. Terry, God's given you something. Yeah, there's someone, the, the word that comes to mind is aspirating. There's something wrong with your swallowing and 
food has aspirated into your lungs and that's created lung issues for you, God's healing that for you right now. All the things that medicine has been unable to do, God is doing for you. Just begin to thank him. Uh, there's a woman named Eunice. You have a severe blockage in your left ear. There's a um, um, n number of canals that are just completely blocked. There's swelling, there's pain. God is healing you. He's opening your ear now in Jesus' name. Just receive that right now. There's someone else, you've been diagnosed with some pretty serious pancreatic issues. Put your hand there. God is healing that for you right now. You're just going to begin to feel a warmth come over your body. Now, some of you are struggling with, uh, you've got paralysis in your right leg, and um, it's, I don't know, uh, it's odd. It's like you have feeling in your thigh, but from the knee down, you don't. God has healed you, and he's restoring nerve and nerve function for you right now. In Jesus' name, all of that, um, the, the muscles just are, are incredibly tight. God, God is able. He is just healing all of that. You're feeling waves of healing go through that leg and restoration for you now in Jesus' name. And someone else, you've been watching that story about Bruce's condition. You have intestinal issues, and God is healing those for you right now. Things that um, have really been life interrupting for you, gone now in Jesus' name. Um, there's someone, uh, the same, same word Terry just had, you're saying, please say diverticulitis. So for you, diverticulitis, may everything be unwound, anything that is twisted, or in the wrong position, may everything come into normal alignment. May you be free from all blockages and all pain now in Jesus' name. And all seepage as well. There are some of you who have intestinal issues with almost like small, small tears in your intestine. God's healing those for you right now. Receive that. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you have done. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for who you are. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you've been healed, give us a call and let us know, 1-800-700-7000. And if you need prayer, we're here for you. We're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. Welcome back to the 700 Club. New GDP numbers confirm the U.S. economy shrank for a second straight quarter. Historically, two consecutive quarters of decline signal the country is in a recession, though that's not been officially declared. Meanwhile, new jobless claims hit a five-month low. The Labor Department reports 193,000 Americans applied for new unemployment benefits last week. That's down about 16,000 from the week before and the lowest level of applications since April. Overall, about 1.3 million people are receiving jobless benefits across the country. Refugees escaping the war in Ukraine are finding help from CBN's Operation Blessing in Poland. Marina worked with her church to spread the gospel in her community in Ukraine. After enduring weeks of bombardment, she was forced to flee for her safety and her young child. Mentally and emotionally exhausted, she made her way to the border with Poland, and that's where she found aid and comfort from Operation Blessing. They provided her boxes of groceries so she could feed her family and help others in need. Upon receiving those gifts after weeks of suffering, Marina said her spirit flew on wings of joy. And you can find out more about Operation Blessing by visiting ob.org. Sick and nearly starving, an out-of-work grandmother refused to eat so her granddaughter could have food. Then all their food ran out, and this desperate family had nowhere to turn for help. Today, thanks to you, their lives are like night and day. Life has been tough for 60-year-old Grandma Saban. She's a widow, raising her granddaughter alone. I am very poor. I wash dishes for events like weddings and funerals to earn a little money. Grandma told us there hasn't been enough income even to buy food for her granddaughter, Ling. After the pandemic hit, even the dishwashing jobs dried up. She said at one point she got sick and they nearly starved. When I was sick, I let my grandchild eat, but I didn't have anything to eat. 
I was malnourished. Lin went to the neighbor and asked them for food. That's when CBN's Orphan's Promise helped the family in their desperate situation. First, we gave them emergency food packs. Then, to help Grandma earn extra money, we gave her what she needed to start a grocery business in her home. It's like night and day. I work at home selling groceries. No need to wash thousands of plates. I am so happy. Then, to increase customers at the store, Orphan's Promise gave her a sugar cane press so she can make drinks to sell as well. I am so happy with the new income. My grandchild also have enough to eat. She now is about to go study at the Orphan's Promise after school program. Thank you so much for everything. That was a day and night difference. 700 club members, we just want to say thank you. Can you imagine going from literally starvation to being able to supply daily what you need and all of that burden lifted off of you, including feeling responsible for your granddaughter? I love when that, that, that little store is delivered, seeing the granddaughter polishing it off and dusting it. We want to say thank you. You know, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member, and that means you are changing lives every day all around the world. But beyond that, changing lives in very life-saving ways like you just saw. Will you join with us? You can be a 700 Club Gold member. You can join the 1,000 Club level. You can join the 2,500 Club level or become a founder. All these options are available to you, and all of them making life-changing differences in people's lives around the world. Our number's toll-free. It's right there, 1-800-700-7000. Will you call today? Just say, I want to be a part of what you all are doing. And when you do, we want to send you Gordon's teaching, The Lord is My Shepherd, the 23rd Psalm, my favorite psalm, and probably the favorite of many of you as well. But this will take you deeply into that psalm and God's promises for you. So call now. Well, the Dallas Mavericks had a crisis on their hands. Their front office culture was a toxic workplace. An investigation revealed a pattern of sexual misconduct that spanned more than two decades. The team needed someone to clean up that mess, so they called Sint Marshall. Sint Marshall is the CEO of the NBA's Dallas Mavericks. She was also once the senior vice president of human resources and chief diversity officer at AT&T. While she's had her fair share of success, she's also had to overcome tremendous hardship. She's endured racism, a battle with cancer, and even abuse at the hands of her father, who once broke her nose. In her book, You've Been Chosen, Sin shares her journey and how having faith in God along with the right perspective can help you thrive through the unexpected. Sint Marshall joins us now via Skype. And Sint, you are remarkable. We welcome you to the 700 Club. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here with you this morning. Sint, you did an interview with NPR. And when you were asked what you wanted your colleagues to know most about you, you said you wanted them to know you grew up in a public housing project. Tell me how that experience shaped your life. I think the way it shaped me is, you know, watching my mother uh, you know, deal with some of the issues that she dealt with. Uh, she always was positive. She always uh, taught us to have faith in God. Uh, she put a math book in one hand and a Bible in the other and told us to keep our head in these books and the Lord would truly bless us uh, to have a better life and to, to get out of what I know now to be, uh, you know, being poor. And so my mother uh, gave us a foundation of uh, faith, and that has helped me to endure uh, every obstacle that has come uh, after that, and it's helped me to stay very, very uh, positive. Uh, so I'm not hung up on uh, you know material uh, things uh, because I have learned I learned at an early age what really matters, what's important, and what's not important. Your mom was a tremendous force in your life. I mean, earlier we mentioned the abuse. Uh, your dad was uh, just an abusive guy in the house. And your mom, I mean, getting your mom out of the projects was one of the incentives that just kept pushing you forward no matter what in your life. You excelled at school and then in your professional life, you also uh, excelled in your career. Was that the driving factor through all of this? And what else motivated you? Well, I definitely wanted to make uh, my mom proud. She had very big dreams 
And, you know, I just wanted to help her. My mom, you know, she worked two and three jobs, very strong, smart uh, woman, and, you know, could get herself out of the projects. But I just wanted to be a part of, you know, what the Lord was doing in her life and wanted to make her uh, proud and wanted to make the teachers and community people who invested in me uh, proud as well. Uh, I was taught to have big dreams. The, the four words that I was given to live by is dream, focus, pray, and act. And I think having that foundation uh, just, you know, drove me to want to continue to uh, do the right thing and to really have a life that was pleasing uh, in, in front of Christ. Never was aggressive about promotions or climbing the corporate ladder. Uh, the Lord just always put great opportunities in front of me uh, so that I could glorify him. Tell me about the promotion you were offered at AT&T. Uh, you turned it down. What were you confronted with? Yes, and, and I had a, a great 36-year experience at AT&T. I love the company, love the people there, the leaders there. Uh, but this one time in particular, when I was getting offered an officer promotion, so the highest level you can you can go, uh, one of the, the boss, he asked me to uh, change my hairdo, change my name. I couldn't be sent. I had to be Cindy or Cynthia because nobody knew a sent. Um, you know, she wanted me to change my hairstyle and all that. But we're a crossover because, I, you know, I love good coaching. But it crossed over when she said she didn't want me to use words like blessed, that I had to use words uh, like lucky. And that, that's where it crossed over because when I know I'm blessed, I don't believe I'm lucky. And so when you start to fundamentally change who I am and tell me I can't be positive and I can't be churchy, uh, then that, that's a problem. And so I did turn it down. And fortunately, I got a call just a few minutes later and uh, everything was turned around. Uh, the, the, the big boss said he wanted me to be sent. He knew I was a Christian. All that he thought was great. Uh, so it worked out very well. And this woman, she was well-intended. She was giving me her vision of what she thought an officer should look like and be like. Uh, but he let me know that he accepted me as, as just the person that the Lord made me to be. Yeah, I think one of the remarkable things about your story and your book is that all of these things that happened to you, that's not the only one, uh, you, did, you, never, you never took on a, a victim mentality. And that really worked for you down the road because at one point you had a 25% chance of surviving cancer. Your life experiences impacted how you battled that. Talk about that. I think so. When we were writing the book, I wanted to just talk about my cancer journey and to publish my cancer journal that I had kept during my uh, 12 rounds of chemo. And in working with my publisher and the agent, they said, no, the Lord has chosen you for so many things even before uh, you got cancer, which is how you were able to uh, really have the attitude to get through it. And they were right. And, and I truly believe that the Lord, the Lord, chooses us. He doesn't put any more on us than we can than we can bear. And that he had adversity show up in my life. I had four second trimester miscarriages and then a daughter who died uh, at six months old, a husband who had brain damage, who they said would never walk or, or talk again. I mean, I could just tell you so many different stories. Uh, my daughter who passed away at six uh, months old. But all of that really, I was chosen for all of it. And it prepared me uh, for the battle of my life. And that was stage three uh, colon cancer. Uh, but I had the right attitude. My mom told me when I told her I had cancer, she said, this is for his glory, that you will tell the story one day about how God brought you through this. And she was right. It is for his glory. And now I'm telling the story through my book, You've Been Chosen. Yeah, I, I was telling a friend last night how you you did not use the full term cancer. You took I can off the front end of it and just said. That's exactly right. I focused on the can and cancer because I just knew uh, that it was part of God's plan and that he would get me through it. And the whole book, really, You've Been Chosen, is about how God and great people have always shown up in my life. He has never left me down. He's always brought me back up. Well, it's a remarkable book. It's called You've Been Chosen, and I really encourage you to get a hold of it and read it. It'll make your day. Sint, thank you so much. Wonderful to have you with us today. I want to leave our viewers with a word from Psalm 61. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.